Hi, it's Kat here, and I'm here in a new location for one where you only see one bookshelf and my shoe rack and Batman over here because he watches me as I sleep as he should because he is my protector. And I'm here to do another um, book versus movie review. And as always, this, these reviews kind of have spoilers. I assume that you've either seen the movie or know about the book and you just don't care about the spoilers or you just know what's going on. <laughs> So, yeah. And the book versus movie I'm going to do it on is uh, Silence of the Lambs. And I'm doing this on the Anthony Hopkins um, Silence of the Lambs, not Manhunter, which I think is about Silence of the Lambs. I'm not quite sure because I haven't seen it yet. I heard it's pretty decent, so oh, maybe one day I'll rent, get up the gumption to rent it or something. Anyway, I got really invested in Hannibal TV show. Like it's here. Look how sexy he is. Look at that little. And decided to reread Signs of the Lambs because I haven't read it since I was in third grade. I know I was a pretty messed up child. I'm still a pretty messed up person, but it's okay. We're going to get over it. <laughs> so anyway, actually the Anthony Hopkins version of Signs of the Lambs really follows the book. Like lines are taken straight out of the book into the movie. Like it was pretty, pretty good, pretty accurate really and like nothing has really changed from book to movie other than they took stuff out um for example they took out a whole bunch of stuff about bella uh jack crawford's wife and how she's dying and how that's like emotional toll in him that's why he's so cold to clarice and doesn't really want her to help also he's still in suffering for what happened with um hannibal and will graham he still feels kind of responsible for that which he should but <laughs> Anyway, um, so, yeah, so that's, you just don't really see a lot of what Drag Crawford's character, in fact, it kind of seems like they have a love interest, like, type of thing in the film, especially towards the end, like, Clarice, like, I don't know, it kind of just had a weird feeling vibe to it, um, and in the book, it's not like that at all. Also, um, I don't really, I know this is going to sound weird, I don't really like Anthony Hopkins' portrayal of Hannibal. Now, don't get me wrong, it's really, really good portrayal. He totally deserved, I think he won the Oscar for that role. He totally deserved it. I will not take that away from Anthony Hopkins. Just personally, not my Hannibal. I picture my Hannibal, like, very calm and surreal. And, like, I know Anthony Hopkins kind of did that, but it played a lot more of a creep factor, especially when he's like, <laughs> like, I just, I don't picture my Hannibal doing that. I haven't pictured it when I was in third grade. I don't picture it now. I picture my Hannibal be like elegant and graceful. And he, in this, he has pale skin and super red lips and stuff because he's been in the BSU, BSI, um, the Criminally Insane um, Institute for years by this point. So he has not seen the outside world at all for, I believe, like seven years or something which is pretty extreme. You get really pale. So he does look creepy, but I don't see him as being creepy. Uh, some of the things that they, another thing that they took out from the book to movie, it was like how awful Chitlin is. He is an awful human being. <laughs> like Even towards Hannibal, like you're trying to help this guy. What is wrong with you? And I like, he was mean in Red Dragon. He's mean in this. He's mean in the show. He's just an awful human being and deserves to be eaten. <laughs> I know it's weird to say, but it's true. Also, they took out all of Alan Bloom, who kind of goes crazy. And um, they took out all of his parts. Uh, I don't know. Like, it's mostly just characterization as well as side characters is what they took out. Everything else has pretty much stayed. The whole Clarice thing was really really well ad adapted for the film and really well written in the book another thing that i preferred the book to is actually the deaths like it's a lot more creepy factor because you're learning from buffalo bill's perspective of like why he's killing these people and what he's feeling and then you also see you read the description of hannibal's kill at the end of the film or at the end of the book like his final like, hurrah before he goes, runs off, and I have a red Hannibal, so I have no idea what he does. <laughs> but, um, you, it's a lot, it's really well written, that last death scene, especially, like, when he's wearing the guy's face, 
and everything and how he's getting taken out on the stretcher and like how the wings of the guy's skin was hanging and everything. It's, I like the book description a little bit more because you experience what other people are feeling as well as like descriptions. It was really well described. So I don't know what would be a proper term for that. But yeah, in the film, it was just like a quick flash. Now, this could be because the film was one of the first few where like serial killing was like this, like a normal thing in cinema. <laughs> well, not really normal, but it was one of the first ones where people were like, oh, that's a really good movie. You should check it out. What's it about? It's about a cannibal. <laughs> so that could be it so it wasn't really like they couldn't do the blood splattering everywhere and everything because they still it's still and i think 80s 90s like you couldn't really quite do the blood splattering wall thing yet not yet <laughs> eventually we get there i mean watch the hannibal tv show they get pretty intense pretty fast the first episode in general just blood everywhere that they couldn't really do in the 80s which I enjoyed tremendously. <laughs> so yeah, all in all, I think The Science of the Lambs was actually, it is my one of my favorite books. And the movie was really, really good on keeping true to the book. Which is kind of surprising, because you could have done a whole bunch of different turns. But they kept with it. And I'm proud of that. Not proud. I'm proud of them for that. Good job. I forgot the director's name. But good job, you. You did a good job. Anyway, that was book versus movie. Hope you enjoyed it. Cheers!